in California. Mr. Guillory. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I am uh, going to go through uh, some slides and I will be brief. I know we're about an hour here into this presentation. Uh, uh, thanks a lot for uh, including me. Uh, he didn't really include me. He called me and said, I need you to show up. <laughs> and, and so, you know, so here I am and uh, came by to spend a few minutes with you all. Uh, one side they talk about, well, Webster is elected and, and that works and we do a lot of good things here in Orange County. But more than that, uh, I'm in the business of service, right? All of us, we're in the business of what we call servant government employees. And so when you kind of think about that and you look at all the other things going on today, you know, you can say, well, statistically, each one of you is better off than the next person possibly, statistically, with all of the things going on. So I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit today about, you know, there's a lot to pick at these days, but I really wanna pick at you from another little, a little different standpoint. Uh, as I share with you uh, this afternoon, uh, I listened to my friend over here, you know, she said, who ate my cheese, right? So that, that was a good book. And there's another guy, a friend of mine, who uh, ran GSA in Washington for a number of years. He wrote a book called, uh, you know, It Can Be Fixed. And when people see the book on my bookshelf, they say, it, does that mean IT can be fixed? And I say, no, it is good, it is bad, uh, it is different, it is difficult. And you all say, IT. Right? And we go, well, what is it? And why do I need it? But today, uh, this whole issue, uh, you know, they say, well, things are really bad. And I've been listening to folks here. And I heard some of you say, well, things are really bad, but it's a great opportunity to, uh, to make a difference. And don't let any good crisis go unwasted. Go wasted, right? Don't waste a good crisis. So uh, I, was, I, was, I read a lot of magazines that you all get from time to time uh, in the evening time that helps to put me to sleep at night and things like that and uh, when I'm not doing some of the other things. And so I read and, and I give people credit for, uh, for some of the things that I find. So I'll give Frank some credit today. But he says, your budget is about to be cut or it's already been cut. Your it thing faces a hiring freeze or layoff. And uh, you can see the pep talk about doing more with less coming your way, right? And all of you have had that pep talk. You know, you go into the CAO, to the CIO, to whoever, and they say, man, we gotta do more with less. And I've heard that so much in the last five, six months in a year, I'm sick of it. But uh, being that I'm one of the guys giving that pep talk, you know, I, I, I kinda laugh and get myself boned up. But it kinda goes like this, you know, Greg, uh, you got your plans for 209, we need the project cost to be less, you know tight budgets today and all that. Well, Jerry, I, I did a thorough analysis and came up with the project timelines. Now, Greg, the same as last year. You know, the big guys want big cost affordable plans. Isn't cost affordable and big a contradiction? Never mind, I'll take another look. And Greg, they also need to know why so many projects go over budget. Greg Feynman. So he says, you want me to lower the cost, give you a great number, and all those other things, and then you want me to not go over budget. These are impractical and impossible things that are going on. Uh, how many of you are visiting Orange County? Very good. I'm glad to see that. Nathan, my young friend back there, we're glad to see you here, man. All right, spend a lot of granddad's money while you're here. Okay, we need the money, all right? So, so this is a part of that process. Not a lot of money, but we're getting this, uh, this whole issue about do more with less, okay? And then uh, I'm seeing a lot of things about getting your head into the cloud. And this whole issue, in the, even in the federal government, we got cloud computing czars, and some counties are, are putting together these, these czar things, you know, cloud computing czars and so on. And then uh, I've been hearing uh, many of you talking about, well, you know, we need to bring back simplicity. And uh, so that is another thing that, uh, that I'm hearing about. And then uh, there are, my staff keeps saying, beware of the weather fronts, you know, if we're gonna get into this cloud thing. I heard somebody over there say, well, I'm a little worried about clouds. And uh, the, the issue is, is that out of all these things, capabilities and limitations of automated tools and enforcing the concepts and policies that we have. You know, in California, there are, uh, there are on the law, in the books, there are laws that says that data in the public sector in California cannot reside outside of California. It has to remain and reside within the boundaries of the state of California. 
because it has to be able to be found and audited any time that the person who is responsible for the data undergoes an audit. And they have to know where the data is at and be prepared to present that data for an audit. So when you talk about cloud computing and many of the companies say, well, it could be anywhere, but you know, what are the restraints and everything? And so these are interesting, uh, some of the interesting concepts that are going on. And I'm gonna dash through this, but these are some things I wanna get to as I move through my talk. And I told you there are a lot of stuff to pick on these days, right? And this one says, I don't know, uh, I don't know, I've never done anything like this before. Are you sure this is the right thing? I don't really have any experience doing this and they're about to jump into the cloud, right? And someone back there says, tell the vendor to shut up. <laughs> so so they're, they're about to jump. And then we have uh, this great thing going on out of Washington called the, uh, the recovery and we've been told to think recovery and uh, the Stimulus Act is one of the most complex bills ever passed by the Congress. And so, you know, everybody right now is kind of stressing out on stimulus, right? Uh, they, they, they don't know what to do, but they know it's there and everything like that. And then we got a group of folks that says, you know, well, we already had some stimulus money, but we spent all of our stimulus money on tracking the stimulus money. <laughs> and so uh, I got one group that's already reporting that that's going on, you know, that's happening. So we have this lot of stuff to pick on, right, these days right now, you know. And then I have my great, you, this crowd, my great friends in here, the demanding state of the CIO and CTO, right? Tough, ladies and gentlemen. Demanding state of your business. And this guy personifies that. So he's kind of standing there like saying, you know what? I'm not changing. I'm not gonna give up. I'm just, we just have to do these things. Interesting uh, prospect. All these things I get out of the books I read, that you guys read, those things that put me to sleep, you know? And so uh, a part of that is, you know, everybody says, well, we have to save the uh, strategic projects. And uh, then guys like me come along to control the money, and we say, strategic to who? All right? Because I have constituents, and uh, they, uh, they have their issue about strategic projects. It may be flood control. It may be chasing down dogs. It may be any number, saving trees, uh, making sure the grass in the park is green. It probably doesn't give a darn about your server and your VMware and your cloud and all those other things, right? And I will contend to you, you know, when you say make it relevant now, I have never had a server call me at night and curse my ass out. <laughs> but I get constituents that call me and curse my ass out at night, okay? But I have never had a server or, or a LAN or a WAN or a desktop or a laptop, call me and give me what for. Talk about my mom. Okay? Webster, so, I, could, I, I could have a friend of mine, Jack Fernando, out there come down and <laughs> make the server do that. Make that server do it for you. Yeah. So, uh, but, but, you know, uh, I, I also uh, starting to look into this whole area of uh, avatars and second life and everything. I'm getting old enough to start having a second life pretty soon. <laughs> but you know, they, I was uh, with a group uh, a little while back and this guy had uh, on his laptop and he walked away and he had a mic and he's talking to his laptop. And then pretty soon he projected it on our screen and there on the screen was his avatar secretary. And he called her, her name was Hallie and he talked, to, I think he got that from Hal, you remember in 2001. But anyway, he talked to her, she answered him back, told him about things in the office area. And he says in three years, Every one of you guys will have one of these on your desk, so we laughed about that too. Anyway, one of the things here in this process, though, is that as you give or your, deliver your message, you're going to have to learn to craft your message in a way that provides immediate justification. Because politics demands immediate justification and gratification. 